Hello everyone, this is Fletch from Twilight Render. Welcome to the Twilight Render Getting Started video tutorial series, Six Essentials to Rendering with SketchUp and Twilight Render Plugin. Please download the files from the link in the description below and feel free to follow along. I'm an architect and designer myself, so there's no reason to be intimidated. I'm here to help, so let's dive in together. Let's get started by opening the Getting Started Tutorial file. It says right here in the file name, Twilight Getting Started Tutorial SKP. All right, today we're going to be discussing our fourth essential tip for rendering with SketchUp and Twilight Render Pro. So let's open the environment. Also, let's open the Exploration Render. If you have Twilight Render Pro, if you have Twilight Render Hobby version for free, you can just use the render and uh, just render a normal scene, but perhaps maybe use a very low render setting, perhaps render width of 500, and you can just render like that. Exploration Render will update as we change the environment settings for us. So let's hit this, uh, you can either hit play or this uh, reload all geometry button, and it will start rendering. And you can choose from any of these render settings. Today we're gonna be rendering with the exterior daytime. And if you have Twilight Render Pro, you can enable the denoise. Um, if you purchased the plugin for Twilight Render Pro uh, called Fast Forward, it will denoise the rendering. So you get instantaneously denoised rendering, which is very nice. And as we edit our environment, you'll be able to see it updating here. So the first thing we're gonna do is because everything is pure white, it appears to be getting blown out, um, having the sun kind of very bright. So we're gonna paint everything at kind of a light gray or somewhere medium gray, light gray. Let's try this color here. Holding shift key, I'm just gonna paint everything in the scene that color. And we're gonna reload the geometry with that button there. And here you can see the exposure of the sun looks a lot more natural. Um, there will be very few things in your scene that are pure white, so um, this is a much more realistic preview of the sky. There are different background sky types in Twilight Render. The first set are the background, and they start out with the word background, and those do not contribute light or reflections into your scene. So if you choose them, just be aware that even though your, your background color may be gray, there's going to be black reflections in your scene and that will not um, contribute any light to your scene. So if I disable the sun, you can see there's no light being contributed to the scene. It's simply that the background color is light gray. This is the same for all of these. So, and these are there basically, um, if you have a particular artistic vision you're trying to capture and you need this tool, but they're not there for everyday use. Typically, you're going to use the physical sky. So I'm going to focus on that today. Let's talk about physical sky real quick. Physical sky works based upon a uh, algorithm that is matching the sky and the sun position with SketchUp. So as we move to July or we move to different times of day, let's enable the sun and we can see it change. Um, that sun will be matching the view in SketchUp. If for some reason the sun uh, shadows and the SketchUp shadows are not matching, try clicking the corrected shadows button, but in typical situations, you will need that. If you are choosing physical sky, your sun color will default to white, but if you wanna warm up the sun, you can always do that here. You can choose a little bit warmer color. Um, I'm going to exaggerate it here just for effect. You can choose this, and now we have a, a dark, yellow type sunshine coming down. That might come in handy if you want to do a early morning shot. So let's set this to early morning. Maybe the sun is uh, very yellow at that time of day, or maybe it's um, late evening. Let's drag this really late. And then the sun would come in as kind of a yellow color. All right, but for now we're gonna to default to uh, white, so we'll set it back to white. And let's look at the brightness. So if I disable the sun and I choose noon and I choose August, 
you can see that the sky itself is contributing light in all directions into my scene. From behind and in front, all, all directions, the sun is working as a sky dome on the scene. And even if I change to nighttime, uh, very late, um, it's still going to contribute to all different directions. It's contributing light. But when I enable the sun, that is in addition to that light. So there's two lights in the scene, the sunlight and the skylight. The brightness of this skylight is controlled by this power here. So if I were to double that brightness and turn off the sun, you'll see that the whole scene becomes immediately brighter, even though there's no sunlight enabled. I'm going to turn that back to 1. Uh, turbidity you can ignore, but basically it's the uh, blending of this low color and the high color in the background sky. The haziness is the soft shadow. So if we're in August at noon and we look at the shadow here, on this wall coming down to the floor. Here we can see this shadow here. There is soft shadow enabled. So we have sun enabled, we have sun shadows enabled, and we have sun sh soft shadow enabled. You can see that the sun produces a sharp shadow as it's close to the casting edge, and as it moves further away from the casting edge, it gets softer. In the preview, you can see it right here. So if we increase the haziness, that will increase the softness of this shadow or the blurriness of this edge. Um, to exaggerate that, I'll set it to 90. And here you can see that it's all of a sudden very soft uh, shadow edge here, very blurry edge. If I set it to 1, it'll be a very sharp shadow here. Okay, the default of 10 uh, is quite realistic for most renderings. So the best bet if you're starting out in Twilight is to just leave all the physical sky defaults as they are. Uh, the sun strength, I believe the default is 5. I've lowered it in this case because I want to um, be able to have room for um, when I go into pro post processing to boost the exposure and um, change the dynamics of the, the brightness and the contrast more. But a sun strength of five, 5 gives you a nice bright sunlight for exterior. I'm going to set it back to 4 for this example. If you're happy with your physical sky settings as they are, you can choose a preset and you can create new and you can name it and then you can save that and recall it later. Let's talk about spherical skies. Spherical skies can be a JPEG, a PNG, an animated GIF file, or a HDR file. You can choose any of those types of files, but the environment is very important for photorealistic renderings. So my best tip for you if you're going to do photorealistic architectural renderings is to build up a good library of quality spherical sky tree lines so that when you do your renderings you get these uh, this beautiful sky. This is really a great way to increase the quality of your renderings quickly. Let's try putting some water in here so you can see what happens with the sky reflecting into the water. Let's go to glass and we will apply the glass to the glass. I'm going to stop this rendering and hit reload all geometry to reload the glass. Now you can see how the trees will reflect in the glass and how the sky reflects down into the water, even the trees. And instantly this is a much uh, higher quality rendering right away you can see how that really makes a drastic change so your environment is critical to a, a good rendering if you want to enable an HDR image 
which is a high dynamic range image. You will want to disable the sun first and leave brightness set to 1. And then you will load your HDR. I've already got a preset here for an HDR image. And this is a light tent used for uh, typically for product shots. And it gives a nice uh, general illumination of the scene from all directions with a strong overhead light. Um, if you find that you've loaded your preset but your background image appears to be the wrong location, then just close the window and open it again. And it will show the correct path for your image. So here we go, it's the Light Tent HDR image. Now you can use your sky rotation to change how that image is positioned in the sky, rotating around the center of the scene, this um, zero, zero, or the uh, sketch of main axis, the world axis. So I will rotate this to 180, and you'll see in the previews that now the sun is in a different position, or the sun in the HDR image is in a different position. And we'll turn off the sun here to get it to act more like the light tent without these strong shadows. And if I load the uh, Wisconsin Lake DSAT image here, so this is the Wisconsin tree line, we will be able to see more clearly as I rotate this. So this is a 180, and if I change it to 170, you'll see here in the preview how the, the trees rotate. And then you can see them here as they rotate around. If I set it back to 180, you'll see this tree will move. So this is how you can precisely change how the background is oriented. And let me uh, load that dialog again so you can see that we are on the tree line image here in the background image editor. Path, and I'm going to choose sky rotation of 20. And here you can see that it rotated again. So this is very handy and helps a lot. If you are having trouble visualizing what's going to happen with the sky, as you're working, we've given you a few options here. There's the ball preview, reflective ball. There's a framing preview. And this shows, you can always see that there's a green and a red axis here. And that, that corresponds, of course, with SketchUp's green and red axis. So I'm going to stop this preview for a second and let's take a look at the plan view. If you go into the plan view, you can see that the green axis is here and the red axis there. So when um, I'm looking at this frame on the green axis, that's the part of the sky that we'll see pointing out in that direction along that green axis that way. Um, so if I'm looking to my left here, that part that's going to be in that part of the sky in my actual view will be off to the left along that red axis. And on this right red frame, it will be off to the right that direction. And this green one, you can see half of it here and half of it here. That's going to be, of course, facing directly south along this green axis. All right. If we go into the spherical pre preview, it allows you to see the whole, um, the whole sky map. And if you go to the windows, this is trying to reproduce what it might look like if you're inside of a house and you're looking out the windows. And this is, of course, looking in the north, so it's looking along the green axis. So it's not necessarily what you'll see out the windows of your house if you're looking out the east or west or south or in any other direction besides north. But at least if you're looking north, you would, looking out the windows, you'll see that this is how big trees are going to appear off in the distance and so forth. Finally, there's um, sky probe images that are in a different format from a regular spherical sky. So some HDR images come in a sky probe format. Let's take a look at that real quick. So here we can see, here's what a preview of a spherical sky looks like. Here is a preview of a hemispherical sky. And here is a preview of a sky probe. So if you're seeing the previews for your images looking like these circles, then you're using a sky probe and you want to load it into the sky probe sky type. But if you have loaded, um, a spherical sky into the sky probe, it's not a problem. You can just switch it here and now, poof, you're in spherical sky mode. 
And we can see the difference of the mapping. You can see the background of the trees change in there, like squished and changed in their mapping format. So you can see that that's working. Here's hemispherical sky. You can choose that. If your image is, again, of a hemispherical sky type like this. So if you're creating your own spherical sky, you'll want to use a 2 to 1 format, typically 8,000 by 4,000 pixels. And um, looks kind of like this. So in this particular case, you can see that the trees appear very small, but if you were to zoom in, you see they're good quality. And that this whole bottom of the, the scene is, is grass, and the upper portion is all the sky. But you can see that it's not necessary that the sky be perfect all the way up, because in your view, when you're looking um, out of a house or behind a house, you're typically not going to be seeing the top and the bottom of the sky like that. You'll only see a portion of it. So here is a good example if I were to go to spherical sky. And again, we load this and we render it. You can see that um, you're not seeing very much of the sky in this image at all. Just a little portion of it here you couldn't possibly see up above. So um, feel free to create your own spherical skies and use them with Twilight Render. There are many that you can find online. If you have Twilight Render Pro, you can go to our red carpet section and download this Wisconsin uh, sphere, spherical uh, tree line sky that we have here and a couple others. Uh, for your use with your renderings to help you get, get started. Thank you for watching part 4 of our 6 essentials for rendering in SketchUp with Twilight Render plugin. Please hit that like button if this tutorial has been helpful for you. Stay tuned for part 5, our next essential skill, which is all about lighting. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to receive notifications so you won't miss a trick. Thanks for spending this time with me, Fletch from Twilight Render Support. Until next time, I'll see you on the forums.